Welcome to the UVM Extension New Farmer Project webinar, uh, Fencing for Multi-Species Grazing. I'm Jessie Schmidt and I work for the UVM Extension New Farmer Project. I'm going to be moderating this evening. Our presenter tonight is Colin Kennard from well Wellscroft Fence Systems. He's a second generation fencing retailer and livestock farmer and his experience with agricultural fencing products continues to evolve along with the innovations in the industry. He's passionate about giving people the knowledge and tools to allow their farms to thrive and we are lucky to have him here this evening. Welcome Colin. Thank you very much Jesse. All right, well we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for that great introduction. Um, so today I'm going to talk a bit about uh, um, how to fence different species and uh, specifically for grazing them. I have uh, a number of slides here and we're going to go somewhat quickly through them. Um, a lot of these uh, I've, I've pretty much divided this into groups by uh, livestock type and they're really in no particular order. I sort of did largest to smallest but we're just going to go through these. Um, I have a few questions I'm going to ask you along the way. Um, but uh, first off, I guess it's just our opening slide. As you can see, grazing animals, um, I mean, it's, it's really uh, one of the best ways to get uh, benefit both for your animals and for your pastures. Um, and uh, just before, I guess, before I get into that, I'm going to just briefly tell you a little bit about Wells Crop because we've been fencing since 1978 and uh, we really have evolved since then and do a lot more than just livestock inclusion. Um, so as you can see, we do a lot of uh, predator exclusion, so keeping deer out of orchards or woodchucks out of vegetable gardens as well as uh, keeping birds out of vineyards. Um, and small fruit, so blueberries and strawberries and things like that. And then finally, we do a lot of trellising um, supplies. So that's just a quick thing about Wellscroft. We are located in New Hampshire, um, down around the Keene area in Cheshire County, Manatic region, and um, service all of New England and, and a good portion of New York. So here we go with our options. Um, first, though, I just want to ask, I know we have um, just a few participants here so far, but I'm curious if you can just use the, the yes no button there. If you have a perimeter fence um, that is permanent on your property, and the reason I'm going to ask this is because a lot of times uh, grazing animals uh, is done by subdividing a uh, perimeter fence. And so you might have a, a perimeter of high tensile electric. You're going to see that quite a few times tonight. And, um, you know, oftentimes people will subdivide that pasture with uh, various types of conductors. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, looks like most people so far don't have a perimeter fence, which is okay. Because uh, I have many slides. I'm going to show you both the um, pros and cons to that. But we're going to start with the equine um, horses. And like I said, I just have a number of slides um, of different types of fencing. Um, when you're grazing animals, uh, you obviously want to have something, either you're going to be grazing them in a sort of a permanent location um, or you're going to be moving them around um, to new locations all the time. So if you have a, a permanent location, you're going to want to probably subdivide that, as I mentioned. So uh, here you can see we have in the distance a four-strand Fence. There are three strands of rope and one strand of half inch, um, sorry, uh, inch and a half tape at the top, and that's sort of adds some visibility. Um, in this case, that's going to be the perimeter fence. And then up close here in the foreground, you can see we just have two strands, and there's a couple horses in here. And horses are, you know, they're usually <laughs> all horses are different, but. Uh, most times after they're trained, they're pretty respectful of the fence, and so it, it doesn't take a whole lot to keep them in. I know there are exceptions to that, but in this case, just two strands is going to keep them uh, there just fine. Um, if I jump to the next slide, here's just a closer picture of that perimeter fence, and actually it is four strands of rope and one strand of inch and a half tape on the top. And the reason we do that, I mean, this probably um, you could probably even lose 
one or two strands of that rope and still have an effective perimeter for horses. But you never know what other animals they may have included with um, these horses. So, you know, if you had some, you know, shorter animals, maybe uh, some donkeys or, or smaller ponies, things like that, you might want a couple extra strands down low. Um, you can see that the tape is a little bit more visible than the rope, um, and oftentimes people will add in a strand of that just for visibility. And not only visibility for your livestock, uh, but also visibility for things that may wander up to the exterior um, perimeter of your fence. So deer, you know, if deer can't see a fence, they're going to walk right into it. Um, so you want to try and have that as visible as possible. Some other options for a perimeter fence uh, with horses. Here you can see um, this is a woven wire fence. Um, this is a, what we call a physical fence. It's not electric. And in the distance you can see, uh, you know, it makes up this rectangle here. They've added one board at the top, and that again is sort of for visibility. Not so much um, structure. It really isn't going to do much to keep the fence there. That fence, because of its uh, nature, it's pulled tight on the corners and the ends. And so it really will stand up by itself. It's just, you know, the posts are there uh, to keep it from falling over side to side, but most of its strength comes from uh, being stretched really tight. This is a great fence um, if you want to have a winter area. You'll see this a few more times as we go along, but winter paddocks are a great thing to have because electric fencing isn't as effective in the winter. So if you have an area that can be made by uh, you know, a permanent fence like this, um, that's really going to be great for you. Um, the next slide here, this is sort of a combination. This happens to be um, a horse barn, and, and you can't see the buildings, but here are a number of paddocks that are created with um, what's called a uh, centaur. It's a high tensile polymer fence that's made up of three high tensile wires all encased in a, uh, a polymer, plastic polymer. It's five inches wide, so it's very visible. It's also very safe because horses can bump into it and not get injured. You never want to use high tensile fence with horses um, because they could get cut. You want to use low, low carbon fencing. Um, and I know we're going to get into the grazing aspect here, but a lot of times I'm just showing you some of the perimeters uh, that people will make. The perimeter might be a little more expensive, but once you have that, then in the long run, you can do whatever you want inside of that per, uh, perimeter. Here's another example of, you know, this is just a board fence uh, perimeter, but what they've done is added some electric offsets um, on those boards. So these are made up with, with rope, um, and those are electrified strands of rope. The other nice thing, and you're going to see this several times as well, but even if you have a perimeter fence that is non-electric, sometimes very nice to add at least one strand of electric because when you go to subdivide that perimeter for grazing, your subdivisions, you're going to want to electrify those because the animals, if, if they're not electrified, the animals aren't going to respect them and they'll just either try and climb through them or jump over them. Um, Non-electrified non fence is often dangerous because animals can get tangled in it. Um, and that's never a good thing. So you're going to want to try and have a, um, a perimeter like this or a, an electric offset around your perimeter because then any subdivisions you do, uh, you can easily electrify those subdivisions with uh, what we call a power link, uh, which is just a simple maybe three or four foot section that uh, has an alligator clip on each end. And you just clip from one side to the perimeter. and uh, then your subdivision also is electrified. You'll see exactly that slide uh, coming up. So those are some quick options for horses. Um, I only have one slide for our next commodity group, but llamas and alpacas. Um, very similar. Also, you know, don't need several strands. I mean, they, this here is five strands of rope. Llamas, um, you know, they both, llamas and alpacas both respect fences pretty well. They, um, they also can see, you know, with the visibility of the rope fence, it's, 
it's um, it's a good idea to at least have multiple strands or one strand of tape. And again, uh, so deer and other critters uh, outside the fence don't wander into it. But this fence here is also very easy to move. Um, yes, there are five strands, but if you have at the end of this, you can reel this up on reels and you can move the posts around. Those are just fiberglass rods put into the ground, probably eight inches, six to eight inches, and uh, you can move those around and then reel out your fence again. So that's for llamas and alpacas. Our next group is cattle. Now cattle we turn to uh, are a little different and, and of course you have dairy cows and you have beef cows and those I believe it or not are, are quite different as well. Um, these guys here are beef cows um, and you can see there's just one single strand, it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, it's just one single strand of uh, IntelliTwine. It's just a very thin twine and um, when cattle are trained to that, they respect that quite well. I have a, a neighbor that uh, keeps oh, a good dozen of these in um, and she moves them just about twice a week, I'd say. And uh, sometimes, I know a lot of people um, say they don't even need to electrify that single strand, but it is a good idea, like I said, because you never know if, if that somehow gets taken down either by a, a tree or something like that. Uh, you don't want your animals to get caught up in that. So keep those electrified. Uh, single strand, again, for beef, pretty, uh, pretty basic. The other alternative, going the other direction, again, going back to the perimeter, this is a woven wire fence uh, for cattle. Also, as you can see, well, it's a little tough to see, but at the very top of that, um, you have a single strand of high tensile. Uh, and that, as I mentioned earlier, is great because now you have an electric perimeter, even though the, the woven wire below is not electrified, that single strand at the top is electrified. So you can use that to uh, clip on your subdivisions. Here are some Devon Longhorn cattle inside of a high tensile perimeter. Um, these guys are, uh, you know, they're very big animals and they have horns, so you do need to be uh, vigilant about animals with horns. We're going to talk about goats coming up, and, and that's another one. But horns are, def, you know, generally are an insulator because they're hollow, and so some animals will learn to use their horns to their advantage. Um, and uh, that's a that's a big uh, reason why we generally uh, encourage people to train their animals to the fence before just putting them into it. Um, and you know, you can do that in a number of ways. I have some pictures coming up of training, so we'll talk about that then. Okay, our next slide here. Um, this again is some beef cows uh, behind a single strand of half-inch tape. Very, very easy to move, just single strands, so you can reel it up. Um, the posts there are pigtail, what we call pigtail posts, and uh, those. What's nice about the pigtail posts is they have a a step-in component, and the spikes go into the ground. There's two spikes, and they come off at a. The second spike comes off at a right angle, so you can step on it uh, with your foot very easily and get that into the ground. All right. Now this next slide is some cattle behind what we call cattle quick fence, and that's a it's a type of electric netting. You're going to see lots of netting. But this is the first one I'm showing you, and this is netting for cattle. And it's only been developed within the last few years. Um, as you can see, there's four strands, and the strands are held up off the ground about a foot. There are 24 inches between each vertical, and the verticals are not electrified. So all of the horizontals are electrified, and um, together, you know, between those, it, it really makes a very good barrier. You could you could do dairy cows or beef cows in this. Um, the posts are this is a 48 inch high fence. The posts are three quarters of an inch thick, so they're very sturdy. You can also step those into the ground. They have the same double stake component. And um, 
this also makes a good subdivision fence. So like I said, if you have your perimeter, you can use the cattle quick fence to subdivide your pasture. Uh, very easy to move. We'll show you some slides coming up again uh, on how to set up and take down the fence. So that's it on cattle. Um, maybe just a quick shout out. I'll ask if there's uh, any questions here. I actually do see one. Uh, what is the benefit to using the woven fencing rather than single strand? So the benefit of the woven is that that is a non-electric fence, and that can be a year-round fence that really requires slim to no maintenance. Um, you can, it, it is a little bit more costly initially to set up, but once you have it there, you can put animals in that all season long, all winter long, uh, and not worry about them getting out. Now, electric fencing, you know, a single strand in the winter is not going to be very effective at all, not only for keeping your animals in, but for keeping predators out. So, you know, that's another reason why having that winter paddock is, is a good thing. Colin, sorry, I wasn't more clear on that. I guess I was wondering about this, um, the system of fencing here for cattle versus just a single strand. Why are people moving to a, a uh, um, this kind of fencing versus the netting. I'm sorry, I should have said netting instead of woven. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So the netting, first of all, the posts are built into the netting. So when you get that, and it usually comes in 50 or 100 foot sections, and everything is in it. So the posts are, are woven, well not woven, but they're inserted in the fence about every uh, 12 feet depending on the netting. Some are a little shorter than that, some are a little longer. And uh, when you go and set this up, really it's, it's very simple. You put the first post in and you walk backwards and the next post comes out of the group and you can put that one in. Um, it's very quick to set up. You can do that in just literally three minutes. Um, the single strand, also quick but not as much because you have a reel and you need to put your posts up and then you need to reel it out and as you reel it out you insert it into each post so it's a little bit more uh, it's not all gathered at once and also it's single strand so if you have multiple strands like two strands with individual posts that's another reel that you would then need to go to the beginning attach and start to reel out whereas the netting once you put it up you know there's suddenly four strands so All right. Um, if you have any other questions on the cattle, definitely just uh, type those in there, and I'll I'll do my best to get to them. We're going to move on to goats. So again, here's some woven wire for goats. Uh, there are lots of different configurations for woven wire. So the, the cattle woven wire that you saw before, and I can just jump back to that very quickly because I want to show you the difference. You may notice that there's about six inches of space between each vertical, and that's completely fine for cattle. You don't need to get any finer than that. And in fact, a lot of times uh, some will even go 12 inches between the verticals. When you go back to this goat photo, the vertical uh, stay spacing, as we call it, is, uh, is much closer. So there's actually three inches there between those. And the reason we do that for goats is primarily because we don't want them putting their heads through it. I have a picture coming up here. I'll just jump to that right now. The next one where you can see why this is six inch spa stay spacing. And this little baby goat has gotten its head through there. And uh, these are, these particular goats I think are, I don't know if these are, I think these are, um, of a variation of boar goat. They're, they're colored a little differently, but they have horns, as um, a lot of boar goats do. So they have little horns that are going to get stuck. And the wire will push apart, they'll put their head through, and they'll get stuck. So that's the reason why you don't want to use six inch. That goes for the adults as well as the babies. Now, even the babies, when they're young, um, they have small enough heads, they might be able to get through the three inch spacing. So what we do is we add an electric offset uh, down below 
in addition to up above. And we put the one on the inside of the fence so that the babies come over and uh, they touch that before they even get as far as the, the woven itself. As I mentioned, um, and here's a, a photo of one of the insulators that we have that puts an electric offset on the inside. This holds it out about 12 inches from the wire. And you just you can run a single strand right through this eye right here. And it goes all the way around the inside perimeter. You could do on the, on the outside as well. Uh, if you have a, a you know, strong presence of coyotes or something like that, some other predator, some people will run a, uh, an electric offset on the outside as well. And once you have that perimeter, as I mentioned, it's really easy to, you know, your, your infrastructure is there, the posts are there, the wires there. Adding an additional single strand is really uh, quite easy to do. So moving from the woven wire, your next option for a, a perimeter fence is this high tensile. And you do have to be a little careful with goats in high tensile. This is a six strand high tensile fence. Down low, uh, the spacing between those is, is about five to six inches. And then it gradually gets larger at the top. And this pasture here, we have divided into four sections. And you'll see some other photos of it later. But this um, allows us to rotate this uh, herd of goats through those sections. And uh, as I said, in between, the subdivision fences, in this case, are only four strands of um, what we call a maxi shock, which is a single strand of uh, braided cable, and in combination with a half inch tape. And what that does is, because it's an internal fence, it doesn't need to be as secure, uh, because you're, really, you're just keeping the animals from one side of the uh, pasture to the other, not so much keeping predators out of the pasture. It's a four-strand fence, and we added one strand of tape for visibility for the animals. Um, when, you, when you do have a perimeter fence, if you're, one note I want to make here is when you're fencing into the woods, and this is a nice uh, example here of, of silvopasture, which is coming up. But when you're fencing into the woods and you're using trees, it's, um, it's really good to try and have a board on the tree first. Here is an example of that when you have a woven wire fence and if you staple it right to a tree, it's great to use trees. They're there, uh, saves you money. However, we always recommend you put a board on the tree first and then staple the fence to the board. And that way when the tree grows out, uh, it's not going to grow into the fence. It's going to push that board away and uh, you won't have to come along in a few years and be pulling staples out of the tree and trying to get the fence out of the tree. So just a note to, you know, we definitely recommend you do that. Jumping back, and this is that same pasture as I just showed you. It's a different angle. Um, and here's our subdivision. You can see it begins, a high tensile fence in the foreground is really, really difficult to see. But let me see if I can highlight it around here. Hopefully you guys can see that. There is a single strand. Maybe you can see it better over here. There is a single strand. Um, there, but there's six of them. <laughs> there's one there, there's one there, there's one down here. Um, so we have our high tensile perimeter, and then our subdivision is all in here. This goes um, about 300 feet to the other side. Again, four strands. And at the top, you might say, well, what's that section of netting there? This is a 20-foot section of netting that is our gate. So each section has its own gate so that we can move the animals from one to the next. And uh, this is just called a net gate. It's really quite useful because uh, all the posts are there. You just disconnect the uh, electric link, move the post aside. The goats can run into the next section, you set it back up, and you're done. Um, really a very easy uh, and inexpensive way to have a gate. So that's called a net gate. I have a few more pictures of goats. Again, grazing goats. Uh, they're probably one of the more difficult animals to keep in, depending on the breed and how large they are. But goats, as I mentioned with the cattle earlier, these boar goats anyways, these have horns. So 
those horns can act as an insulator, and it's important to to make sure that your animals are trained to the fence so they respect it before you put them in. Um, if you put if you put some new goats in a, an area like this, um, it's possible they might put their heads through it, uh, not knowing it's electric because they they wouldn't feel it because of the horns, and then uh, and then get stuck. So training is a, a hey, part Colin. Of this Sorry to interrupt your, you yeah. again. Um, it, could you turn up your volume a little bit? It looks like um, some people might be having trouble hearing you. Um, if you could turn up your mic, uh, your volume on on your phone or yep, certainly. Yep, certainly I'll do that for you. Okay, we'll try that, and I'll Sounds talk good. a little Thanks. bit louder. Hopefully that will help people. All right. Uh, so just to finish up with goats, again, this, this netting that they're in is uh, 42 inches high. This is called electrostop. It's great for grazing them you know, you know, free range, uh, if, whether you have a perimeter fence or not, or again for subdividing. Here you can see in the distance there's a woven wire fence, and we're using them in this case to just mow down some grass that's grown around uh, some of the areas that we store inventory, so we don't want that grass to take over. So we've just put them in there and we'll leave them there for a couple of days and they'll mow it right down for us. Here's another example of goats uh, doing a really great job on renovating an old pasture that's just, uh, it's been left and it's, it's grown up. There's a whole bunch of raspberries and trees and all kinds of junk in there. And we've taken some, uh, again, the same netting. It's 42 inch electro stop, and we set it up around this area and let them in there. Goats are one of the animals that really enjoy uh, that roughage. They really like chewing on all the junk that sheep won't touch. So your raspberries and small trees and you know thistles, all kinds of things that they just really like in their diet. So really, really excellent fence for reclaiming uh, pasture like this. So that's the last slide I have on goats. Again, feel free to ask any questions if you have any on these specific commodity groups. Again, we can take some at the end as well. But from goats, we're going to move on to sheep. And as you can see in this slide, we have uh, some sheep that have been in an area here uh, for, I think they were in here for about two weeks. Um, and the grass, as you can see on the other side, is quite tall. Um, I'll show you very soon how to set up fence, uh, specifically netting, in grass that's that tall, because you're going to want to do a few things to make sure that uh, it is effective. Here again is a uh, six wire high tensile perimeter fence, and we've subdivided it with netting. Um, this particular pasture has four sections, and again, at the top or bottom, wherever you choose, uh, you can just disconnect the fence, the, the netting from your perimeter, open one side, and move the animals into the next one. It really couldn't be simpler. Um, and you just rotate them around. You know, like I said, there's four quadrants here, four sections, and once they're once they've eaten the first section and gone through number two, three, and four, by the time they finish the fourth section, that first section has already grown back, and they can now just start the whole loop over again. Really is a, an excellent way uh, to graze the animals and make, a, you know, make use of a single pasture. You might not have a lot of room, but by dividing it up like this, uh, it allows you uh, grazing throughout the season. Here's another picture of that same pasture with some different animals, different, different lambs, different season. Um, you can see in the distance, you can see if I can point, um, this section over here is where they were first. Um, and then they just got moved from here into this section, this third section. So by that time, this grass has already grown back. They have one more to go in this direction, like I said. And then um, they'll be ready to go back into the first one. The llama also in there is a guard llama uh, that we have keeps watch on that flock and uh, makes 
sure that no foxes and that that type of critter are getting getting in there. Same or similar group of sheep. This is not on our farm. This happens to be down in the village. So when we move the animals down into town, we don't have, um, you know, we're not there 24/7. We can't constantly be watching them. So we we do have a llama as a guard there. We do use the 42-inch high electro stop as opposed to the 35-inch high electro net um, because we want that extra height for for predator protection. And as you can see, this pasture has got young lambs in it, and so it's really important that we have that uh, height, and uh, it's very important that you have voltage in your fence. We're going to talk about that coming up, too. This is the same pasture that I showed you um, in the beginning with the goats, and um, we also use it for the sheep. Again, six wire head tensile, perimeter fence subdivided with single strands. This is the winter, and this is actually right before we take them back to uh, the barn for the winter. So um, here they are. Just There's just about a couple inches of snow on the ground. We don't usually like to push it much further, that, further than that because, A, the animals uh, don't have to dig through the snow to get the grass. A couple inches they can handle, but uh, when it gets much beyond that, it's too deep. So. We like to stretch our grazing as long as we can. This next slide is uh, coming home in the winter. So we've grazed the animals out to pasture from very early spring all the way through. Oftentimes it can be into December. Uh, depends on when your winter really starts and what part of the New England you're in. But uh, in this particular photo, I think uh, this was about November or sorry, December 8th. So we really got um, we extended our grazing season all the way to December 8th. We didn't have to feed any hay. Uh, we also had a, a fall crop of lambs here. And you can see these lambs, they look pretty healthy. And uh, those lambs have not seen any grain at all in their whole life. So that was a just raised on what we call hay crop aftermath. And that's just all those hay fields that you know we've already gotten our first and second cuts off of. And we're into the fall. We're into the late September, October. and um, we want to finish off, you know, make use of those the little grass that's still left on those hay fields. So we'll put the sheep out um, with the electric netting and, and uh, move them around and lay them out in that area as well. So again, let me know if there's any questions on in any of these groups. We're going to move on to pigs. Now this next section about pigs, um, there's some slides in here about silvopasture. And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But this area that you can see behind these pigs is um, was actually once all forest. And over about a three-year span, we cleared it out. We went in, took some of the big trees, and then we had uh, we put both goats and sheep into this area um, to clean up, you know, cut down on some of the small undergrowth. And now we've had the pigs in here. The pigs are in uh, what we call it's just pig quick fence, and this is actually a product that's been around for only about three or four years. And I have some photos to show you what we used to do with pigs. This photo here is the 40 uh, the 42 inch electro stop, and while that is good for some animals, pigs as some people may be aware, like to root up all anything that's in their in their pasture. So they're going to root up sticks and rocks. And where is all that going to go? It's going to go onto the fence. And so pigs, with grazing pigs, there is quite a bit of maintenance involved because you need to daily or even several times daily go around the perimeter of the fence and pick it up, kick it off, make sure that the the fence isn't shorting out on whatever the whatever the animals have thrown at it. So, um, if I back up a slide, this new pig quick fence. Actually, what's neat about this is that it sits up off the ground and allows all of those roots and trees and rocks and everything to be pushed under the fence and uh, not short out the fence. 
really it's a great product if you're going to be raising animals, uh, pigs, and moving them around frequently. I highly recommend this. Comes in 50 and 100 foot rolls. Um, on the back side, you can't see it, but there is this particular pen. They have a, a way up here by the sheep. There is a woven wire uh, border there, and on this side over here is a single um, or smooth wire. It's uh, four strands of maxi shock. So they actually are in, uh, you know, a very uh, interesting area because they're surrounded by three different types of fencing. Um, the one at the very top is not electrified, so we don't have to worry about it as much. It's also very rugged, so they can root stuff up and throw it in there pretty easily. But um, the other two are electrified. So moving on, here's just some photos of this area, again, um, being reclaimed by pigs. Here's again, moving some. These are uh, Tamworth pigs, I believe. This is that same area the following year. Um, we went and decided to go back and um, put them in again to, to let them continue rooting up some of these things. And here you can just see this is uh, there's one, two, three, four strands there that are single strands. The one strand of tape, that's an older style tape that's orange, but that's for visibility. Uh, and once pigs are trained, um, they will respect that as well. And then I just want to show you these slides of uh, sort of the before and the after <laughs> um, using netting. Now this netting is the old uh, electro net, which is the 35 inch net that we used to keep pigs in before the quick fence was was developed. And this is what quick or the um, this is what the 35 inch net looks like when the pigs have gone around and put a whole bunch of debris on it. Uh, as you can see, it's going to short out anywhere that horizontal wire touches. Uh, grass, you know, roots, sticks, anything like that, it's going to ground out and reduce the voltage in your fence. And if anyone here raises pigs, they'll know that if that fence is low or off, the pigs will find out very, very quickly. So this next photo here shows you the difference between, in the, in the distance, you can see this is the old net with the stuff sticking into it. And this here is the new pig quick fence, which allows all that dirt and sticks to just push right underneath it, not affecting the fence at all. So silvo pasture, basically the practice of combining forestry and your livestock and grazing them um, so that they both benefit. You're going to benefit in also in having beautiful lands maintained by your animals. Um, I have a couple photos briefly of silvo pasture. Here you can see this once, you can see the brush in the distance, but this was once uh, all forest, and we've cleared that out. This uh, picture you're seeing is taken <clears throat> about six years after it was initially cleared. Here's another photo. Um, I actually took this uh, along a roadside because it was, I thought it was a really beautiful photo of silvo pasture. You can see in the far distance there's some corn planted and then you have some thinned out pines. And this is recently thinned. You can still see some stumps and things. And then uh, in the foreground you have your field. And so this farmer was going to extend the field into that uh, pine area. And then the last photo of silvo pasture here is just this is where you saw those pigs. Uh, only this is the following year and we now have some sheep and uh, young lambs in there, keeping it clear, keeping down the grass and the tree growth and all that stuff. And then in the very far distance, you can see there's some 42-inch electro, uh, electro stop. Um, we hope to continue this area. We're going to continue expanding um, this silver pasture area and, and keep thinning out some of those uh, trees and, and getting the junk out of there. And the pigs, as we speak, are in there. All right. Moving on to our last section is the poultry. Um, I know there are a lot of there's this year. Well, the last several years have been very big for poultry. A lot of people are getting into raising uh, their own birds in their backyard. Uh, here you can see these are um, this is a farmer raising turkeys behind some poultry net. This is an older style poultry net, but 
what I want you to notice about it is that it's uh, it's quite tall. It's 48 inches, and um, in the distance, you know, he has his uh, hoop built on a wagon so that uh, he can move this around. Now, what he does is that the the birds will all go into that hoop house at night. He'll close it up, and then he'll move the fence and uh, hook up with this tractor. He'll hook up to the wagon, tow it to a new area, and then open it so that then in the in this um, the morning, those birds will come out into a, a totally new area. Uh, this is pretty common. Uh, I'm sure many of you have seen this done or do it yourselves. There's many um, many different types of uh, poultry houses. Um, here's another example. It's a little bit more uh, basic. Doesn't have uh, the cover, but the birds are allowed to go underneath this. It's just an old wagon, and under the blue tarp that you see there are the nesting boxes. So these are laying birds. Um, these are reds, I think New Hampshire reds, and uh, again, same uh, poultry net. Now, this photo was taken actually about six years ago, so it's a little bit older. We have some new poultry net that I'm going to show you that uh, has some new features that I think are really nice. One thing I want to show you is uh, the difference between a poultry or a chicken tractor and an egg mobile. So the one that you saw before with the tarp. That's what we call an egg mobile. So it moves around. You know, you hook up to it with your tractor and you tow it around, and it has a place for the birds to lay. In this case here, I think there's actually some ducks in there. But whether you're raising meat birds or turkeys or ducks in something like this, and you move it, you know, daily, you just pick up the whole thing and drag it. Some are made out of PVC. Some are made out of wood. There's all kinds of different styles. But uh, I want to caution people setting something up like this without a fence around it uh, because critters, um, predators, raccoons, foxes, anything like that can come up and uh, they'll hassle the animals even if they couldn't get through it. Uh, they'll either work it until they can get through it or they'll um, you know they'll aggravate the animals inside uh, to the point that you know that can injure them. So even if you have a chicken tractor like this, it's a good idea to set up some poultry net around it. And so here's some more birds. One thing I want to show you in this photo, uh, sort of a no-no, is that this diagonal stay is helping uh, to keep that corner up. And we don't generally do that anymore because what we found is if you have that there and, and predators are walking the perimeter of that fence trying to figure out how to get in at your birds, and for some reason either they trip on this wire or break it, um, you've now lost the um, you've, you've lost that corner. That corner is going to bend in, and um, it's possible that it, the fence may even go low enough that that a predator could jump in. So instead of doing this, we recommend that you put an extra post in on the corners to uh, to help uh, sturdy those up. Now in this photo, we have this is a another version of a I guess this is a chicken tractor, I would say. There's no nesting boxes in it, but um, this has some wheels that you can move around. The fence that you see around this is a new style of poultry net. This is a 48-inch poultry net plus. And the big di difference between this and the older style poultry net is that the post spacing is uh, shorter. So the old style had post, post spaced about every 12 feet. And the new Poultry Net Plus has them spaced every six feet eight inches. And what that does is it prevents the netting from sagging in between those posts. But the older style, we found uh, customers really wanted to go, and, and it was a good idea to put additional support posts in between the posts that are built into the netting. Whereas with the Poultry Net Plus, this new style, you really don't have to do that. There's enough posts built into the netting. Um, that what you see in this photo is actually what it will look like when it's set up. It comes in two different colors. That you have the dark green in the foreground there, and the uh, the black and white. Also comes in 42 inches as well as 48 inches for some people. Um, if you don't need that extra height, the other thing I want to point out is that with grazing animals, I mean, oftentimes you need. Obviously, this is electric. You have your energizer in the corner here. This is running off a battery. 
um, and you need a ground rod for or some ground field for that energizer. If you're moving fence um, all the time, it's really um, it's really going to be quite a task to pound a ground rod like a four foot ground rod in the ground and then pull it out of the ground every week. So what we did in this case is we took an old piece of chain link fence. It's a little difficult to see, but on the ground next to the battery is a section of chain link fence. And we've just attached the ground lead uh, from the energizer right to that chain link fence. And that serves as our ground field. When we go to move this, we just roll the chain link up, move it to a new plot, set it down, and uh, attach the leads. It really couldn't be simpler. So this whole area takes me about 20 minutes to move uh, between the, the netting, energizer, and, and moving the house. Another thing that um, some people do, you might ask about aerial predation. Do you have um, anything that's come you know, flying in and, and taking birds? That is a possibility. Um, this particular pasture they're in has a perimeter fence. And inside of that, we happen to have a, a guard dog. It's a Great Pyrenees, Great Pyrenees, so that helps uh, keep those away. But um, I have another slide here that I'll show you uh, as another solution. I just want to mention one question we just got in, uh, and the question is, will you get a shock if you happen to step on that chain link when it is hooked up? Um, it's possible. I certainly wouldn't walk on it with bare feet. I walk on it with my rubber boots. I've never gotten a shock. Um, ideally, you shouldn't have too much voltage in that ground field because you want most of the ground or most of the voltage going into the fence rather than the ground field. So, most often you won't you won't get a shock. If you touch it with your finger, you may feel a little something. But um, someone else asked me one time if it's possible to put that chain link inside the fence. Um, because they had small children running around and didn't want children walking on that. So yes, absolutely, you could put that ground, uh, the chain link ground field inside the, the net and then you wouldn't have that problem. So here's another example of some, what somebody did for aerial predation. They actually had one sheep live with, I think they had about 100 birds in this photo. So uh, that's, uh, that's another way to uh, maybe deter aerial predators. Um, this sheep on the, uh, on the coop that you can't see in the photo is, has its own little uh, feeder for grain so the chickens don't get into it. But um, it was really kind of neat. This sheep just really accepted the job. And I just have two more photos of, of new products that we have for grazing poultry. Um, one that is really exciting. This is called a poultry net hot gate. And um, you may have been wondering in, in some of those earlier slides, how do you get in or out of that poultry net? Because it is 48 inches high, or even 42 inches is pretty tall to step over. Um, so in the past, we would just shut off the energizer, either remove a post and walk in, or we'd just uh, push the fence down and step over it. But now we have this new poultry net hot gate, which allows you to actually, it's only uh, three feet or four feet wide. And at the top, there's a set of handles. And it will, uh, this, you can buy just the gate and attach that into your existing net. And it, what it allows you to do is pick up this section of net and move it to the side. You can walk in. You can carry in your water or your food or whatever you have, and then turn around and, and clip it shut. You can do all of that while the fence is electric. So you don't even have to uh, unplug it or turn it off. Really a really very handy uh, product that we found just, just this year. And the last poultry product is um, what we call no shock chick fence. And it's basically a it looks like chicken wire, only it's a plastic product. And um, small enough so that baby chicks really can't go through it. Um, behind that hen is a white fiberglass rod put into the ground. And um, it just stays up on those. Comes in 50-foot coils. Um, again, you would want to be vigilant about aerial predators. You could put something over this. But um, I raised these. The chicks you see here are two days old. And um, I hatched them out and then uh, put them right in this. 
and they've been in that since. Um, they've now graduated to a bigger area, but I really, uh, I really found this to be an excellent way. Certainly, if you're raising chickens, um, if you don't have a broody hen uh, and you're raising them from, you know, hatching them out of an incubator, um, you might have to be a little careful about warmth. But I don't worry in this case because the hen uh, takes care of all that for me. So any questions? We're uh, we're getting close to the time we need to wrap things up. Um, I do have another question for you um, before we get into. Uh, I'll try and skim through the electric netting here, but definitely, uh, if you have any questions, just type them in there. Or Jesse, feel free to interrupt. Um, I just wanted. There's about half a dozen slides here on tips for using electric netting because that is one of the most common um, conductors that we use for grazing animals. Before I do that, just a quick question for everyone here. Have you ever used electric netting? So go ahead and use your little, uh, you can either type in or you can use the uh, response code there. A, never. B, once or twice. C, many times. Or D, you're a pro. You've used this so many times you can set it up in your sleep. So just curious. Uh, how many people out there have experience with it? While those answers are coming in, I'm just going to show you. This is that pasture earlier that had some sheep in it. And when you're setting up fence in a, in a very grown pasture like this, it's important that you make a, uh, a lane for the, path, for the fence. You can either do that with like a weed whacker, which, yes, that's a little time consuming and you know, it takes resources. Uh, the other way to do it is just we take our gator and we drive from one side of the field to the other, and then we go back, set up the net in the tire track. And so that took you know, just a couple minutes to do that. So that's one way to do it. Um, yes, you could trim it, but this is a very quick and easy way to set it up. And when you do go to set it up, netting comes with all the posts bound together, and then the net hangs from there. It's basically looped. Um, and so you want to make sure that you don't never roll netting from one end to another. It's always just all the posts are together. You walk backwards, and each post will kind of come out. And you lay it on the ground, figure out the area that you want, then go back and set them up. And when you move net from one place to another, you just do that in the absolute reverse. Pick up one post, go to the next, just gather all the posts together, and you let the net part hang. So you end up with all these folds, basically, all these loops of net. Here he's taken his elbow, rotated at 90 degrees, so you can see it's up. And uh, he's just going to walk to the next spot. The sheep in the background are contained in just a small roll. So if you, have, if you do have three or four rolls of netting all hooked together, you can use one to contain the animals while you take the others down, move them over to a new section. And then when that new section is ready, open up let the animals into it, and then you can uh, take down that fourth one or use that, uh, incorporate that into your area. Here's another photo you can sort of see. Uh, you just let these, this is the small area they were in, you just let them out into that new area, and uh, now he's taking that down. Um, so I do have just a very, I don't know, 10 more slides. Jesse, do we have time to just scan over those? Or do you have some other questions? Looks like most people here um, have either used netting once or twice. Um, yeah, Colin, there um, was a, f a few questions here that came in from Lisa. Um, she wanted to know, um, you know, protecting against predators digging under netting, um, and also, is it possible to stack the netting if needed? Um, for an eight foot high bird area, I think maybe thinking about you know trying to um, keep the birds from flying out. Uh, any thoughts on that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can't really stack the netting vertically over each other. Um, the highest net that we sell is actually a, a, a llama net, sixty eight inches. It would be way overkill for poultry, only because it's cumbersome to move around frequently. Um, some people will put uh, some netting, like 
really light duty um, thin plastic bird netting over the electric netting. I've seen that done if you have a problem with um, you know aerial predators. If your problem is more the birds flying out of the netting, um, that can happen for a couple of reasons. Either A, the birds are bored, they don't have enough to eat, so they're going to try and find sources outside of the fence. Um, that's one reason. Some, some breeds are just more flighty than others. Um, people will clip wings if you're not worried about the aesthetics. Um, if, you're, if you're raising birds not for show, uh, clipping their wings is completely harmless. It's like trimming our fingernails. Um, you, can, you can clip the primary flight feathers on either one or both wings of uh, the bird, the chicken or duck or whatever it is. And that'll, that'll be enough um, that they can't get that, uh, that flight to jump over. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Um, and we do need to wrap up here. We're at the end of our time. So are there any uh, yep. final questions? Go ahead and tap, uh, type them quickly into the chat box. Um, and also you'll see in the uh, uh, chat area there is a quick link to a survey. Um, it's very quick and we really appreciate getting feedback from people who participate in our webinars. We also ask for ideas there for future webinar topics. Um, so it's really helpful if you just take a minute, it's a hot link right to um, the survey form. And um, Colin, thank you very much for presenting the this evening. Um, all of this uh, great overview of all of the different types of fencing and all the different it seems like you covered about every possible species someone could want to fence, I think. So <laughs> um, really, really helpful and informative. Well, Thank welcome. you so much. Thanks, all right. Good. And thanks Good. everyone. I know it went a little quick, but today. hopefully that covered it. I, I think that you definitely did. And thanks everyone for joining us this evening. I'll go ahead and put the New Farmer website in our chat area as well. Um, if you want to check out our website, there is a sign up. Um, if you want to get regular emails from us, we send them out once a month um, with updates for new farmers. So um, please feel free to check that out. And again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Take care.